In the Ark story, there exists tribes. Just like us players, survivors in the lore journey alongside, fight against, or simply acknowledge other tribes, each with their own stories. A few survivors even made their own. The Islands Explorer notes present us with the most tribes compared to any other map, and in today's video, I'm gonna go into detail about each one of them, and their intentions, victories, and failures. Thank you to Stell for writing this script. You can find him in the Ark Lore channel of my Ark Discord down below for any questions you may have about the Ark story. Before I begin, allow me to preface, these tribes aren't written in any particular order except for the New Legion, which is last due to its length. Though there are a lot of smaller tribes excluded from this video only because they go unnamed and lack any significance to the story. Speaking of which, any important story beats will only be mentioned in brief as to keep this video from being ridiculously long. For added context, Rockwell, Mayin, and Nerva are all well known on the island, save Helena, who instead is an associate of Rockwell's. With all that aside, let's begin. Howling Wolves. The Howling Wolves were the dominant tribe of the snow biome on the island in Helena's time on the Arks. They're known for being fierce fighters. We first hear of them in Helena Note 3. It was at this time that they allowed Helena to join them for a time while she studied in the region. Eventually, though, she left them in order to study the native creatures undisturbed in their natural habitat. Though after a while, she eventually comes back to them, specifically after visiting and leaving the Iron Brotherhood with the Broodmother's artifact in her possession. Helena telling them all about what had happened convinced them to search out the artifacts of the Brute, Devour, and Pack in order to help her activate the Blue Obelisk. Though after hearing what happened to the Iron Brotherhood, that's all they could offer her. The last we hear of them is toward the end of Nerva's notes. Unfamiliar to the snow region in its entirety and wary of its potentially detrimental weather, Nerva refused to lead a march into Howling Wolves territory, instead choosing to pick off smaller tribes as he and Rockwell studied the obelisks. This allowed the Howling Wolves to advance on New Legion territory once he and his army headed towards the Tech Cave. All of Nerva's men who entered were killed by the Overseer and Nerva himself by Mei Yin. It can be assumed then that the Wolves' attack on the New Legion compound was successful. Black Thumbs the Black Thumbs were a more aggressive tribe that commonly feuded with the New Legion, eventually causing their inevitable downfall. First mentioned in Rockwell Record 3, he details that they and another tribe called the Painted Sharks came to him angrily after an incident in which two Black Thumb barges were sunk by the Painted Sharks under what was called the Southern Isle Accord. Simply put, the Black Thumbs got too close to the Southern Haven and they were blown up, though Rockwell inferred that he would side with the Painted Sharks since they at least brought him some fresh fish. We also hear of the Black Thumbs pretty early in Nerva's notes, starting at number 5, where they harass the new Legion fortress aerially, causing the Legionnaires to build defensive traps in response. In this same note, Nerva tells of a planned war against the tribe. After getting accustomed to guns, Nerva claimed that while they are, quote, far more accurate and deadly than any bow, in the hands of the Black Thumbs, they are of no concern. In war between the Black Thumbs and the New Legion, the Black Thumbs were easily lured into attacking a throng of more tanky creatures, causing them to get attacked by the New Legion's main force. Nerva claimed that while the Legion's attacks were concentrated, the Black Thumbs were scattered. In the end, the Black Thumbs were completely destroyed. While their leader refused to accept defeat, his tribe mates surrendered and offered Nerva his head, wanting to avoid what at that point was an unnecessary fight. But do you know what is an unnecessary fight? Dealing with server providers who don't care about the quality of the servers they're selling you. G Portal, the sponsor of this video, isn't one of those providers. Instead, they provide you with high quality, fast and cost-effective ARC servers for everyone, not just their partners like me. If you want to rent your own ARC servers through them, use my affiliate code link in the description below to get 10% off your next purchase. I myself use G Portal to host my multi-ARC server cluster on PC. But okay, back to the video. Painted Sharks. In contrast to the Black Thumbs, the Painted Sharks were a decently friendly and more so neutral tribe attempting to make peace before fighting, and fighting only when necessary. The Painted Sharks are first mentioned in Rockwell Record 3, where they argue that as per the Southern Isle Accord, they were perfectly within their right to sink the ships of the Black Thumbs since they were too close to the Southern Haven. Time passed, and on Rockwell's word, Helena arrived at the Painted Sharks compound in order to study the island's aquatic fauna in hopes that her findings would help her understand the abnormalities of the island's creatures. Being shown a letter of recommendation given to her by Rockwell, the Sharks treated Helena like a queen in her time there, aiding her research greatly. She eventually leaves them, though, but not before collecting heaps of valuable data. 
Not long after this, while Rockwell was looking for willing test subjects among some larger tribes, he instead found a collective request, negotiate with Nerva in hopes of ending his aggression towards all other tribes on the island. He begrudgingly accepted the favor, but when Rockwell met with Nerva, he found him, quote, honest and intellectually engaging. So he left without finding any reason to interfere. With the situation unchanged, the Painted Sharks mustered up enough courage to directly attack several smaller coastal New Legion fortresses exclusively by air and sea. This caused Nerva to pull the New Legion's coastal fortresses back as to directly attack those set up by the Sharks. Desperately, the Painted Sharks hired Mei Yin for protection, which gave her pause. The new legion had grown significantly stronger since they had last crossed paths during a convoy raid, though so too did Mei. She agreed to aid them, and her grounded cavalry provided them the edge they so desperately required, forcing the legion to cease their assault. Though the sharks didn't treat Mei very well, only calling on her when needed, being fearful to speak to her and camping separately, they pushed into new legion territory. It was clear that they didn't fully trust her, causing her to feel secluded. In the night, a loud explosion awoke May. Worried, she rushed into the Painted Sharks' camp, and there, in confusion, her cavalry was assaulted by the Painted Sharks. When the confusion died down, both sides had sustained losses. The Sharks pinned the blame on May, who they, as previously mentioned, obviously didn't trust to begin with, despite having sacrificed much for their cause. Banishing May, the Painted Sharks were consumed by pride, claiming that they alone would take down the new Legion. Mei Yin knew this would end in their destruction, but was helpless to act. As predicted, the Painted Sharks were pushed back to the central compound in the Southern Haven. As the Sharks' resources dwindled, Nerva had built a greater force, sending flyers to harass them all the while. In this time, he also considered the island's possibility for naval warfare, going so far as to use the war between the Painted Sharks and New Legion as a means of testing out some aquatic creatures with platform saddles. It wasn't long after that that the Sharks had fallen. Laughing Schools the Laughing Skulls were a tribe only mentioned in one explorer note, Rockwell Record 4. During the testing phase of Rockwell's recipes, the Laughing Skulls offered him some unwilling participants for him to experiment on, which he turned down. Red Hawks. The Red Hawks were another relatively unimportant tribe on the island. Their first and last appearance is in Mayan Note No. 8, where she writes of her victory in defending a tribe against the Red Hawks, who used sheer brute force in an attempted raid at the cost of environmental awareness. This blatant lack of awareness allowed May to perform a sortie from their exposed flank, vanquishing them completely. Golden Arrows Similarly to the Hawks and Skulls, the Golden Arrows were not mentioned much. A neighbor to the New Legion, the Golden Arrows attempted a profitable trade agreement between the two tribes under the condition that the New Legion never entered their territory nor encroached upon their convoys or those of their allies. Nerva didn't accept, instead proposing they meet at a neutral site to discuss the proposal. There, he murdered the leaders of the Golden Arrows, which allowed the New Legion to grow in power exponentially, another attempt at peace crushed under the overwhelming power of the New Legion. Iron Brotherhood The Iron Brotherhood was a tribe that, in the midst of favoring Rockwell, experienced great loss at the hands, or more accurately, chitinous limbs of one of the island's guardians, the Broodmother Lysrix. Though Rockwell had accidentally found the artifact of the Skylord while exploring the Northwest Cave, he eventually conceded that he'd made as much progress on his obelisk-related research as he could alone, hypothesizing that he could get others to cave for him if they hadn't already themselves. After many days traveling the island on his Argentavis Archimedes, and many frustrating talks with other unnamed tribes, he eventually came along the Iron Brotherhood, a tribe which had already found some of the artifacts. They also apparently had others, but looking at the record, Rockwell's illustration doesn't match any already existing artifact, so add one more unnamed artifact to the list. In exchange for the artifact of the Skylord, the Brotherhood agreed to report any findings related to them as they searched for more. Rockwell returned to his manor, but found himself unable to focus on anything but the obelisks. Upon a visit to Rockwell, Helena recognized his fixation. Believing that the obelisks could somehow be linked to her unnatural findings on the creatures of the island, she follows up by visiting the Iron Brotherhood. Their camp was near deserted and incredibly depressing, with their leader gone on a hunting expedition. Though they weren't particularly happy to let Helena into their compound, after she mentioned Rockwell, the mood only sunk further. This was odd to her, as being an associate of Rockwell's usually had the opposite effect. All of this aside, Helena was able to confirm that the Iron Brotherhood had gathered all of the artifacts needed to activate the Green Obelisk, though none of them were particularly happy about it. After accepting an artifact from their returned leader, Helena left the Brotherhood. The leader stated that it came from a gigantic spider, the Broodmother, and was similar to the artifacts needed to summon her. He didn't want to keep it, seeing as not only was it useless to them, but it was a constant reminder of all the tribemates lost in the battle, seizing it from the Guardian. 
Helena found the artifact useful, though, as it was one of several needed to activate the Tech Cave. It should be stated that when Helena initially left to visit the Iron Brotherhood, Rockwell too decided on returning to them. Ahead of his leave, he drafted the Brotherhood a letter to tell them of his arrival, and had his assistants prepare supplies for the trip while he finished testing the Broth of Enlightenment on some Gigantopithecus. Frustrated with the results of the experiment, Rockwell was interrupted by Nerva, who had a deal for him. It was either of distraction or retraction that Rockwell ended up never visiting the Iron Brotherhood, probably for the best, for obvious reasons. The New Legion. Last but not least is the New Legion. After Nerva washed up on the island, he was disgusted by the primitive nature of the other survivors, recruiting some under his leadership in order to bring order to the island. Though they initially lacked any training or discipline, under Nerva, their experience grew, as did their enthusiasm. Waking up one morning, Nerva found a flag placed above his compound's armory, reading, The New Legion. Smiling at the sight, Nerva decided that the New Legion had found its name. Soon they began their onslaught on a recently formed tribe who supposedly had prior raiding experience. Though Nerva expected this particular tribe to be a soft target, he didn't expect them to fall into disarray instantly. After looting all of their storehouses, the new legion burned everything, planting their flag amongst the rubble in order to send a message. Those who attempted to escape were slaughtered. In Nerva Note 5, he mentioned struggles against the Black Thumb attacking the new legion fortress aerially. His solution was to create traps which enticed such thumbs into kill zones through what appeared to be weak spots in the compound's defenses. Declaring war on the Black Thumbs, the new legion attacked them cunningly and ruthlessly. With little hope for survival, the Black Thumbs offered Nerva the head of their leader, surrendering completely. Though he had allowed his men a short reprieve from raiding, Nerva soon resumed his regular onslaughts. During a dangerous escort mission, he crossed paths with Mei Yin, who successfully attacked the new legion's flank, allowing the convoy to escape, though he promised to be prepared the next time. Through all of this aggression, one of the new legion's neighbors, the Golden Arrows, presented them with a peaceful trade agreement, which Nerva turned down, though not completely. He did agree to meet with the leaders of the Golden Arrows at a neutral site, though when he got there, a massacre ensued. Searching for more test subjects within the larger tribes of the island, Rockwell was, of course, asked a unanimous favor. None of them had been able to negotiate peaceful terms with Nerva, so naturally they turned to Rockwell for aid. Once he arrived at the New Legion's fortress for a chat, considering how things went with the Golden Arrows, Nerva was surprised by his demeanor, though still wary of what he had to say. To their surprise, after spending half a day together, Rockwell and Nerva mutually found each other agreeable. Once Rockwell departed, Nerva, interested in his recipes and knowledge of the Ark, sent scouts to look for his manor. It's also around this time that Helena catches wind of the new Legion, after beginning to come to terms with the abnormalities of the island. She never truly learns of Rockwell's involvement with Nerva, though. Days before a siege on the Painted Sharks, Nerva had heard rumors of a Beast Queen aiding them in battle. Initially, he did not know of such a person, that is, until post-siege failure, where he determined that the lone warrior who caused the harassment of the previously mentioned convoy had returned. Not only was she a danger to the new Legion, but this was the first time that they had fled a battle, sending Nerva into a fury. Learning of Mei Yin's name, Nerva also learns of her nature as a sort of mercenary. This gave him the idea to stain her reputation with the other tribes, so they'd refuse to hire her ever again. He did this by allowing a group of legionnaires to plant explosives near the shark's camp in the dead of night everywhere except where Mei slept. After the explosives were set off, Mei awoke and rushed to the site where her advances were mistaken for an enemy attack. In the confusion, both sides battled temporarily, causing Mei to be banished, allowing the new legion to recover all of their lost territory at her leave. Eventually, the painted sharks were of course pushed back to the southern haven, and masses of aerial and aquatic creatures were sent to destroy the painted sharks, which successfully cemented the new legion as the most powerful tribe on the island. Nerva allowed his troops to celebrate, though he did not take part in any of it, instead choosing to work diligently. Having his earlier mentioned scouts return to him with word of Rockwell's manner, Nerva set out to see him immediately, believing that Rockwell's mind as an advisor would provide an invaluable tool to the new legion. While riding Record 21 and preparing to meet with the Iron Brotherhood, Rockwell was interrupted by Nerva at the foot of Rockwell Manor. There, in typical Rockwell fashion, he beset Nerva with all kinds of information on the obelisks. Though he had strived to achieve strict neutrality between himself and all other tribes on the island, when an intrigued Nerva offered him test subjects and a mutual interest in the obelisks in exchange for reliable counsel, 
He considered conceding. After a lot of deliberating, seeing as it would help greatly with his studies, Rockwell accepted Nerva's proposition, despite the new legion being an enemy of the other tribes. Rockwell agreed to travel with him for a time, leaving Rockwell Manor and his assistant Isabel, though he was never to return. With Rockwell now at his side, Nerva claimed that after studying reports brought to him by new legion scouts, there was only a few tribes able to resist the legion in their wake though the North was of concern, considering the threat that was the Howling Wolves. He decided to avoid their territory altogether, instead wiping out smaller tribes on his way to investigate the obelisks with Rockwell. Okay, now we get a lore speedrun. Nerva hears May is heading towards Blue Op. Nerva freaks out. He tries to intercept May and fails initially. After May teleports back, Nerva slays almost all of her creatures. Nerva thinks May is dead. Nerva captures Helena. Helena tells Nerva about the obelisks. The New Legion slays the dragon. Helena tells Nerva about the tech cave, and the New Legion heads right towards it. After fighting the dragon, Nerva became aware that with his main forces by his side, other tribes had begun to destroy new legion camps, reclaiming their territory from them in their absence. Infuriated, once more, he swore that he'd use the power of the obelisks to make them pay for every blade of grass they take from me. Worse yet, news spread that the Howling Wolves had left the north in a march on the new legion's central fortress, causing the legion great unease. In a moment consumed by delusion, Nerva claimed that destined to be the island's god, he'd united all under one glorious war. I am its destined god. I had not expected to battle another monster, much less one so powerful. Yet here I stand victorious. My men lie dead, my beasts lie dead. Yet I still stand. Even Rockwell has never seen anything like this place. Surely it is some hall of the gods. Nothing. How can there be nothing? I have searched ceaselessly, and yet I find nothing. I sacrifice my men, my kingdom, everything. I have nothing left to give. Everything I've bled for is gone. For what? For a view? What trickery is this? <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, then Mayan kills him. So there you have it, every single named tribe in the story of the island. If you enjoyed this video, smash the like button and subscribe to my channel. There will be another video explaining the tribes on Scorched Earth all the way through Extinction coming out sometime soonish, so definitely stay tuned for that. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you next time. Bye everyone.